Meet Hannah McGlade. She's a human rights lawyer, a senior Indigenous research fellow at Curtin University, an author and an advocate for families and Noongar rights. Her work focuses on the rights of Indigenous women in both Australian legal system and the United Nations. Hannah has been a warrior for and uh, children and families. She has a powerful voice in the sense that she makes people think a little deeper. So I'm Hannah McGlade or Dr Hannah McGlade and my title is Senior Indigenous Research Fellow at Curtin University. So I came into university through the Curtin Aboriginal Bridging course in the late 1980s and I hadn't actually been able to finish school due to homelessness and family um, disruption at the time. Curtin let me in through the bridging course and I completed half of a one year program. They said your marks are good enough to go into an arts if you want to. So then I did a year of arts and communication and uh, ended up living on the other side of Australia in Canberra where there was a pathway into law. So that's how I um, did my first degree in law. I did my PhD at Curtin University, so I have continued a long association here. Uh, PhD is a quite a, a journey, um, so I, I don't know how many years I took, but it was some years. And I enjoyed um, my connection here at Curtin University and had good supervision with Professor Linda Brisman and Dawn Bessarab at that time. And subsequently I went um, and worked in a tribunal, and then I heard about a research position at Curtin. I really wanted to hone in and focus more on Indigenous research is issues. So it's about um, Aboriginal women and um, violence basically, gender violence and the violence of, of racism which unfortunately has been quite extreme since Australia was colonised and it's uh, a subject that's not often looked about, it's quite a frightening subject and uh, I ended up focusing on, on the actual abuse of Aboriginal children. When we talk about that issue we have to remember that this abuse has been um, coming from perpetrators of every shade and colour so it's not just about abuse in the Aboriginal community and what I found through my research was a lot of this abuse actually started in the mission era in history and the perpetrators were non-Indigenous people and may have even been religious people and I wanted to look at what is the justice system response and I found it was actually really not good enough. In fact, it could be quite abusive and re-traumatising. I was really lucky I submitted my manuscript to um, the Stanner Award program uh, run by the Australian Institute of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Studies and I received uh, the first um, Stanner Award that was dedicated to Aboriginal people maybe in 2012 or something like that which allowed the um, thesis to be published as a book. So after graduating, um, I wanted to, of course, get legal qualification and it was really strange because I was actually at that time the first Aboriginal woman to get graduate from a West Australian law school and I was struggling to get a job, <laughs> you know, because um, there just were, really wasn't that interest um, in, in Aboriginal people in the law back then. There's a bit more interest now. Um, so I did manage to get just my articles done with the Aboriginal Legal Service and the Native Title Tribunal, a federal statutory body and uh, then um, my university that I'd studied at or completed my degree at, which was Murdoch University, offered me a um, associate lecturing um, position in the, in the faculty. So um, that, that was good in some ways because I then became really interested in the area of law, race discrimination law, and I supported uh, community members to also take some cases in that area of law. So there's been a, a historic um, legal win in the case of Jodie Gore who I assisted, an Aboriginal lady who was sentenced to murder, a 12 year prison sentence in circumstances that were clearly about violence against women, domestic violence and self-defence. Um, I have a niece from Kununurra. I was asking questions on behalf of a media contact actually about if I knew any women who were in prison because of violence against them. And while I know that most women prisoners have a history of violence, I wasn't so sure about how many women are actually in jail because of they've been like fought back. And my young niece, uh, Kia from Kununurra, I asked her if she knew any women from the Kimberley, and she said straight away her auntie Jodie was actually serving a murder sentence, and yet she'd been um, a victim of severe violence and abuse. And I was really shocked when I heard her say that. So I got in contact with an academic from UWA, Stella Tarrant, to ask her, ask her to look at the case and another lawyer, Carol. Um, we all met 
and we all shared the same view and feeling that this was a really wrong decision that had been done and deserved urgent attention. It was about finding the, the media who, who were going to tell the story publicly in a really loud way in addition to the legal appeal or what needed to be done there. So I spent a bit of time talking to different journalists and then um, had great success with Annabelle Hennessy from the West Australian. And uh, the, the story was unfolding, so I was playing an investigatory role to assist um, with the story being told publicly, uh, finding out um, information and uh, assisting in, in the background, I guess. Um, and once the story came out, we, we were incredibly happy. It was not just a one short news story, it turned into a four week investigatory series. I've never seen the West Australian do anything like this in regards to Aboriginal women and justice or regards to Aboriginal women, full stop. So it was very powerful storytelling through the media. I'm looking forward to the new legislation that the government will pass. The leader of the opposition, Liza Harvey, asked to meet with me. She said she immediately supported Mr Quigley, the Attorney General and the Labor government to pass this new law and I thanked her personally for her, um, her right stand, her righteousness as well. And uh, this new law, I hope, will, um, will increase justice for women, that women shouldn't be punished for fighting back and for fighting for their lives and uh, increase awareness of all the effort that we have to continue to make because violence against Indigenous women is on the rise and it is taking um, women's lives, it is stealing women from their children. Sexual assault violates women to the very core and uh, you know we, we must increase our efforts across all society. I think um, my, my passion for activism is seeing the discrimination against Aboriginal people. So when I was a young woman uh, um, studying law, we had no recognition of Aboriginal heritage in West Australia. And people wanted to have some heritage sites and everything seemed to be though about um, money and building expensive complexes for rich people. And we had a huge protest movement down on the old um, Mounts Bay Road for a heritage site known as Guninanup in the Noongar language. And I saw there, you know, this absolute lack of respect for Noongar people. But yeah, your own personal experiences of racism and discrimination, of being condescended to, patronised, disregarded, disrespected, of course, fuel um, hurt and upset for you to want to stand that. And we know that racism is against our, our state of ethos and commitment of who we are as Australians and our um, obligations under human rights law as well. So. Many factors, I think, have driven me towards my work in this area, um, but it is about you know, trying to fight for a better country and for, for equality for Aboriginal people and for Aboriginal children.